Sundial, SNDL stock. Is Sundial a good buy? Right about now, a lot of the stocks within this industry are absolutely a good buy simply because a lot of the short sellers are getting taken out. And I expect that this, uh, this movement, very early we are right now, we'll see some big moves later on. I think things are going to probably get very kinetic, probably October, late into November, things are going to get really crazy. But for now, SNDL stock has been taking off a little bit higher. Their numbers are starting to improve. Uh, it's one of those things, there's, they've got one of the best equity positions. Their foundation, they have almost no debt. They have some debt. They're sitting on a mountain of cash, but they haven't exactly gotten there with their investments. They're putting together a much bigger company, and in the long run, it is going to work out. In the meantime, however, it's been a bit frustrating for a lot of uh, people who bought SNDL stock. Let me break down the charts, show you what I'm looking at. I think Sundell's probably, we've probably seen the bottom in this, and it will probably slowly consistently see this stock SNDL stock moving higher and higher and every quarter I expect they'll go ahead and continue with their revenue gains continue with their margin improvements for now some of the margins aren't exactly awesome let's jump in and I'll show you what I'm looking at here's a look at Sundial SNDL stocks revenue print record revenue for them. They did a bunch of acquisitions. We're seeing that showing up over the past uh, five quarters. For those of you who are new to the channel, getting a ton of new people showing up because there's a lot of interest in the industry right now, the United States is in the process of rescheduling cannabis from Schedule 1 to Schedule 3, which would mean cannabis is no longer illegal. So stocks like MSOS stock, GTBIF stock, all those involved in MSOS stock are shooting up. Sundial is seeing a little bit of play from their Canopy Growth, CGC stock, uh, Aurora Cannabis. Both those stocks have seen some movements not necessarily involved in what's going on. Sundial as well. It's a Canadian company. Who cares what goes on south of the border? It has nothing to do with these guys. But there is some amount of guilt by association simply because you really can't get involved too much in the OTC stocks in the United States. Even if you are in the United States, simply because a, a lot of regulations, it is federally illegal, so a lot of brokerage firms won't allow it. So there's a lot going on here, and this is all fairly positive. It may very well be that we see a lot of the short sellers getting cleaned out. Given that, make sure you hit the like and follow button uh, and the bell. I've got a lot of content coming out. I'm trying to cover as much as I can. I've got another stock, uh, Nova Cannabis, that I want to take a look at today, as well as a couple others within the industry. Nova is significantly undervalued. You might want to check it out. They're profitable, unlike Sundial. Moving forward on Sundial, um, gross margins. So the industry average is about 45%. And about two weeks ago, I put together... Um, a, a whole video and I broke down all the various companies combined asking the question how much revenue are they printing what's their gross margins what's their EBITDA profits what's their operating profits yada 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 45% was the average for gross margins and as you can see Sundial is well below average so my take on that is simply this. They got themselves involved in some companies that, you know, they acquired some companies that weren't maybe the best, but they're below average. And if they can sit there and say, at the very least, let's hit average. What happens is you have a lot of facilities that um, you have a lot of fixed costs, rent on dispensaries, things like this. No matter what, you got to pay that rent every single month. There's minimum staffing. There's electricity. There's a bunch of fixed costs that no matter what, you've got to pay those bills. But what happens if you get revenue gains through the same dispensary? You're already taking care of the, uh, the uh, rent. So anything new, additional, what we would call organic growth, adds more profit to the bottom line because the fixed costs are already 
paid for. We call this marginal profits. We look at one, as an economist, we look at one more additional unit. And we ask, if one more unit goes through the system, how does that affect the bottom line? So marginal profits should start pushing gross margins much higher, much more rapidly. Operating profits. Operating profits are, so this, when you break down the financial statements, you've got your top line revenue, cost of goods, operating costs. What's left over after you subtract cost of goods and operating costs from total revenue are operating profits. And they're negative. But if we see the revenue goals that these guys have laid out for us, we could see uh, operating profits nearing break even and pushing higher, which is the ultimate goal for obtaining EBITDA profitability. Um, here before we look at EBITDA is operating efficiencies. And one of the reasons why I wanted to show you operating profits, then operating efficiencies is simply because from an operating efficiency standpoint, Sundial is actually doing pretty well. Comparatively, the whole industry is roughly about 45%. These guys are sub, they're roughly about 34%. So by becoming a much bigger company, slashing costs at all the companies that they've acquired, getting rid of the extra CEOs, getting rid of the extra marketing in, uh, people, things like that, the redundancy, get rid of it, you can save money. And as you can see over the past five, quarters, Sundial on a revenue basis has saved money. Awesome. Moving forward, if they increase their revenue more and more, you'll see this chart sliding lower and lower. It's a cost ratio. You want the lowest number possible. The big players in the world uh, outside of the industry, 15 to 20 percent. That's what you're shooting for. That's sort of wheelhouse for uh, where a company could be. EBITDA, this answers one simple question. If you can get to EBITDA profitability, break even, break even, just get to there. You've paid for that dispensary's rent. You've paid for the staffing to run that. You've uh, paid for the electricity. You've paid the core costs. Plus, you've also paid your operating costs such as sales, general administrative, the CEOs, the marketing team, things like this. If you get to EBITDA break even, all that's paid for. Then we go back to marginal profits. You go, do one more unit, pushes it through. You're getting more profits because everything else is all the fixed costs are already paid for. So pretty soon we'll probably see EBITDA profitability get to at least break even real quick and then start shooting upward. This will have an outsized effect on SMDL stock. It's a very popular stock. A lot of people are going to start rushing into this thing. Net earnings, of course, uh, negative. And that follows, you're just going straight down the financial statements and you're looking at um, the, what's beyond all those things I've discussed earlier is debt servicing and you get in, employee stock option costs and things like that. Well, these guys don't really have debt. That's a benefit. Total equity has been kind of flatlined. They are losing some money. They spend a little bit of cash when they do so. Uh, not a huge issue for these guys. They have a lot of assets. Mark to market, you're probably going to see total equities moving higher simply because all the stocks in the industry are starting to slope upward because of the shift in legality in the United States. Here we're looking at revenue projections for Sundell. This is where they're hit, they're looking for about 715 to 17, 720 million in revenue for 2023. Then uh, 55 to almost 60 million jump for 2024. Then probably about another 40 million in 2025. Now keep that in mind. What I've already talked about with uh, marginal profits. Your fixed costs are already taken care of. You're getting real close to EBIT to break even, which will verify that information. You start pushing more money through the system with organic growth. Those marginal uh, products are going to add marginal profits. This is what you're looking for. Considering where Sundial is right now in relationship to their 
total equity, their market capitalization is not giving its total equity the time of day at all. So over the next two years, you're looking at a company that's going to be increasing revenue quite rapidly, will be improving its bottom line, will get to EBITDA profitability, will get to net earnings profitability, most likely. They've got a ton of total equity that the market's just sort of shrugging, shrugging off. This is a bear market that instantly is being broken right now because of what's going on in the United States. What will happen is investors are going to start picking at the bottom and as those bigger companies down in the United States flip from OTC to NASDAQ, people are going to be looking around asking the question, well, what can I get into next? What can I get into next? Sundial themselves very likely will probably merge again with uh, do some NA activity and may uh, do so with a US MSO. Because of the legality changes, we're going to see a ton of MA activity. And one of the ways you can cut costs even further is M&A activity slash costs. Build a bigger business. And now the legality is shifting. SNDL stock, not really, their price to book ratio is insanely low comparatively. And they're turning a corner. And they're probably going to be doing a lot more M&A activity. There's a lot of really pent up opportunity here. So we'll see how that plays out. In the meantime, here's a look at SNDL stock. You can see over the past month, since we got the announcement, I want to say the 30th, which was Wednesday. So for the past two weeks, people have been nibbling on this one. SNDL stock is a NASDAQ listed stock. A lot of people can't get involved in the OTCs. So they're getting the next best thing. You could be getting involved in MSOS stock, which is a US ETF stock right here that covers all the OTCs plus a couple others, which I always wonder why they're in there. Nonetheless, um, we're seeing consistent move upwards in some of the other, I took a look at ACB, CGI, Kronos, OGI, a bunch of the other ones up there. Um, most likely we will see continued move upward in all these stocks, we may see a little bit of a clean out over the next couple of days. MSOS stock has kind of gone sideways. I've been looking to buy the dip. I've been looking to kind of strangle MSOS with some option trade. Haven't been able to get in the way I wanted to. That's the nature of the game. That's what the game we play. And that's the way it is. We'll see over what happens over the next couple of days. Nonetheless, lots going on. Make sure you hit the like and follow button. Thanks for following along. We'll see you in the next video.